Hi, thanks. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction. So, hey guys, I'm Ken Peretz. I'm uh, from Hexagon, uh, where we build um, a monitoring solution for modern applications. I'm running the solution architecture team in Epsagon. And um, what I'll try to do in this talk is basically, uh, we're also going to leave some time for Q&A after. But basically, I, I want to just go through and um, explain basically the changes that um, that we as developers went through when we uh, when we build our software in the recent years and how software today became much more distributed and um, its impact on how we actually monitor that. And I'm going to do that by sharing uh, um, quite a few of open source tools that are available that you can use them as uh, in order to increase the observability on your system and also elaborate what exactly observability is. Uh, so what we'll actually discuss today is um, first just track back and see how are like the old school observability methods today. Uh, it's kind of funny to call them old school because it's pretty much used by uh, I think the majority of companies today. And the second thing I'll show is how to actually achieve that observability uh, alongside with logging and monitoring best practices. And we also discussed just the overall landscape of open source monitoring. And um, I really uh, enjoy just to get your questions after that so we can maybe turn that into a discussion. So first of all, let's just ask ourselves, uh, why do we even want to monitor our system? Now, um, the main thing that comes to mind, just to make sure that our business work and just to identify whether our business works or not, um, we, we then need to ask ourselves the next question of what do we actually want to monitor? So um, Google have that laid on on their, um, um, it's called an SRE book. Uh, I can share the link afterward, but they basically narrow it down into what are called the four golden signals, which the first one is um, basically latency. Uh, by measuring latency, by monitoring latency, uh, that means that I can look at my service uh, response time over time, and that alone can just uh, give me some uh, information about whether uh, that service is working properly. The second thing is traffic, meaning that I want to look at a given time or even look at the past week of how much traffic is my service is actually handling, crush or run into some threshold or just to have the ability to be aware of how much uh, traffic is that service actually handling. And uh, traffic can be, is not just about the, the network traffic, it can also be if I'm having a, um, a database that it's currently handling um, key value, uh, like key value database and handling some requests, then that traffic is actually the amount of requests are being, uh, or, or amount of concurrent requests are being sent to that database. The third thing that we want to monitor uh, is the errors. And errors are not just the uh, 500 errors, which are pretty, can cover up pretty much um, all the most severe errors that we have in our system, but also errors that are not necessarily 500, but also result in um, what we call a policy error. Meaning if my service is actually sending uh, an, uh, a response back more than the threshold of that I actually assigned it to, then that, that's also considered an error from our side. And the last thing that we wanted to actually monitor is saturation. And saturation is the, the point in time where we actually look at our system and can tell if our system can handle the load, meaning that it reached to a point that it can actually break. And, and saturation is, um, uh, we, we don't want to monitor the, the point that it actually entering saturation, but rather the point that it actually starting to build up to that saturation. Meaning that um, uh, in a few hours, my database is gonna be filled. So I, I also want to make sure to monitor that actual point. Now, um, talking about old school monitoring today, as um, like I said, it's kind of funny because a lot of companies still use that. So uh, to monitor our services is basically done today by installing an agent. And that agent just collects uh, host data. There's a lot of limitations around that because um, 
we are only confined to that specific service or that specific host that we are actually seeing the metrics, uh, the, the data. And, and of course, it only connects, collects the metrics. So there's no actual data from the application level uh, with that old school monitoring. And um, old school troubleshooting is that uh, today, if there is any issue in my service, uh, if I want to actually identify what's going on inside, I'm gonna need to find the logs in order to, to debug that. So we are very re rely on logs for that matter. And uh, if that's just limit to logs, is that logging today are uh, in that old school manner is basically by agent that have been placed in my service and just uh, dumping the logs locally or just sending that to a log aggregator. And the main thing that is uh, problematic with, with those old school logging methods is that uh, um, logging is basically what I've printed out to the screen or what my services has printed out to the screen. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much cons um, constrained on what I actually printed out to the screen. So there's a lot of things that are, my service is actually doing that is not being uh, logged in. And that, that information is something that is gonna be missing from that log data. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna move really fastly about uh, how today, um, like what, what is actually going on today with, with services, especially in those times that we actually live in, we see a huge trend. Uh, it's not something that is uh, shocking to anyone, but we do see a huge trend in, in companies today that are using more and more containers. Uh, this graph I think was built uh, before 2020 and it aimed at 50% of companies who have containers deployed. I think it, that number increased much more today as we are pretty much relying on the cloud today and companies uh, just want to have a lot of things decoupled from their system and just using third-party APIs or managed services. So that alone just leads us to uh, a massive use of containers uh, such as Kubernetes and, and some of that sort. And also uh, Lambda adoption has been increased also uh, during those years. Now, when I think about um, um, the, the change that I as an engineer um, uh, as been, went through in the way that I actually build software, so uh, services today, we find a lot of sense in, like I said, decoupling um, the exact services that, we, that are actually building in. Meaning that if today, if, if back then I thought that I'm gonna build uh, a service that is having, handling payments and I wanted to be able to actually uh, dedicate it on payments, then today I'm, I'm actually focusing on the other hand of using a third party that will actually implement that payment for me. So I'm moving a lot of things that are not part of my business logic to a managed service and that just turned this into my system to much more distributed. And those things together, if we are taking a look at the old school way of monitoring, uh, there's a lot of challenges uh, when things become much, much and more distributed, meaning that it's hard for me to monitor because I can't really identify whether my application is working properly or not. It's distributed into uh, dozens of services and just going through the logs of each one of them it can be super overwhelming. And also troubleshooting, meaning if one of my service, uh, like you see here on the right, we have uh, an example of five different services that are uh, there's like a line that shows that are communicating with each other if one of my service actually broke then it's going to be hard for me just by looking at its specific logs to identify all the uh, trail that actually happened unless i'm gonna um, have anything correlated between them and that uh, if i can't really monitor my system if every time there is an exception in my system it's going to be hard for me to troubleshoot then I'm for sure gonna be finding issue in actually developing. Uh, and being as a developer that you can't really know what's going on in production, you don't have a lot of confidence in deploying new services uh, to that environment. So um, this just led me to what I said in the beginning that we need to achieve observability into those systems. And what is exactly observability? So just breaking it down, it means that have the ability to see metrics, tracing, and logging. And metrics just tells us how our, like what is exactly going on within our system, showing us the, 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 the CPU trend, showing us metrics on the application level. And logs tell us for each specific event why 
it actually broke, what is actually going on within that, and traces as uh, some sort of like the piece that holds the metrics and logging together, tracing allows us to see uh, a request going from end to end, just to understand um, how our system actually behave uh, from individual request uh, till the end that is actually sending the response back. So um, having those three pillars together just allows us to uh, achieve observability. And how can we actually uh, use logging today, if I'll say in the non old school way using the open source tools. So um, there's luckily there's a lot of open source tools that we can actually use. Uh, Elasticsearch is a great place to uh, ingest um, a, amount of data that we actually want to fast uh, later later than this fastly query, meaning that I can take all the logs from all of my services and make sure that I put them in a structured way, such as a JSON and and later on just be able to actually filter that now um today when we think about logging we need to make sure that uh within our services we we did implement some sort of automated um process of logging meaning that we use uh, a single decorator to print out to the screen something structured and that structure needs to be pretty much aligned to all the other services because that's the only way that we can later on take um, logs from different services and then be able to search them. Meaning I want to have my, let's say I have a dozen of services that are currently part of my production environment. I want to have them all printing out the same structure that tells me what is their service name, what is the stage, and a lot of context that it is within that specific request. So later on, I can just go and filter that. And when it comes to monitoring, I also want to be able to uh, take a look at anything from the application level and send out metrics to somewhere because just being able to take those metrics and aggregate them together can give me a full picture of how my system actually looks like. So there is tools as Prometheus that allows me to uh, shoot up events and is ingesting real-time events into its time series database and uh, I can put on Grafana as the visualization on top of that uh, source. So Grafana can accept uh, Elastic as a source, Prometheus as a source, pretty much anything that it can actually query on later. And with Grafana, I can just take those metrics and, and, and visualize them into dashboards. And that can also just allow me to um, business level metrics, meaning that I want to not only see um, how my system behave on at a certain a certain uh, point in terms of the uh, resources that it use or the database that it use, I want to look at the metrics from the business perspective. Meaning, if I have an order system, for example, and I want to be able to um, track how many orders I have, then those services I would want them to output the actual uh, metrics that says that I just handled X orders or uh um then later on I can just look at a week and see how many orders actually been done in my system so i can understand if my business is working properly using those metrics so um something is indeed still missing because we do have the logs and they are pretty much structured we can query them we do have the metrics but we want to be able to correlate them we want to be able to also identify um not only as a single we, uh, uh, service that output a log and what it did. We want to see uh, some sort of the trail within our system. And that just leads me into distributed tracing. And distributed tracing, I'll just try to track back that pretty fastly, but distributed tracing is just the practice of being able to take traces from different services and correlate them, them in a way that is also not affecting uh, the underlying uh, um, uh, resources that are actually used, meaning to be able to look at the uh, call that is being made to uh, a resource and then see a resource invoking asynchronically the second resource and uh, doing that in a way that will not actually uh, alter or modify the data of that resource. Now, if I'll just um, uh, share in a, in, like, in a picture what distributed tracing actually can give us, then 
take a look at the picture here that shows an example of a visualization of a distributed trace. We have here three services that are communicating asynchronically through Kafka and through an S3. And S3 is a um, 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 AWS uh, uh, file, file manager, meaning that you can just put on a file on that S3 and then you can also trigger it to invoke another service. So those asynchronic calls uh, and the way to actually correlate them can also only be made by uh, introducing distributed tracing into your services. And if we'll take a look at what are the available tools that we have today for distributed tracing. So um, open tracing is basically the standard and it uh, recently got joined with open census uh, into open telemetry. And all of those together just define the way that we are tracing our system, meaning that how, uh, what is the way for our service to uh, actually output what it actually did, meaning the service is currently uh, running as an HTTP server and is executing, executing a few operations, then open tracing is the, the standard of how to actually define that. So you can have different services communicating in the same language and later on, correlating those uh, uh, into a, a single distributed trace. And alongside with them, uh, we have our visualization tool as Yager and Zipkin. We have our searching abilities as Elastic uh, also gives us, and also to visualize that and also search with Grafana. Prometheus allows us to inject the events uh, in real time for its time series databases. And all of this can give us the, the full observability that we are looking on uh, within our system. Now, uh, if I can just drop a few tips on how to implement those, uh, um, actually introduce that distributed tracing uh, into our services, then uh, when we have our, uh, if we'll take, for example, a request that comes into our service and uh, we want to think, what do we want to output out to our distributed tracing engine? So we want to be able to capture every call in our system and uh, meaning that we don't only collect the errors in our system, but also collect the, the part that are successful. So we can also see how our system looks when it's actually working properly uh, on top of just uh, looking for errors. And we want to make sure to add a lot of context to every operation that we are doing. But um, without that being overwhelming for our developers, we want to find tools that are reside within the open telemetry libraries that allow to do automated instrumentation, meaning that you can just uh, put those libraries into your Flask application or into um, pretty much any service that you have uh, that is supported within that open telemetry, and that will automatically instrument those calls. So you won't have to uh, developers annotating throughout the code everything that is doing because that can be just prone for errors. Now, uh, introducing dis distributed tracing to your services allows you to uh, be able to later on use Elastic for um, indexing that context and just later on uh, searching. You can use uh, Zipkin to visualize those requests uh, or, or Yager just to look at a timeline from end to end. And you can also use a Grafana on top of that to create alerts. And by adding context to those services, I can actually uh, be able to monitor um, different environments, meaning that I can differentiate between um, my dev environment and my production environment. Um, so this is an example of how a distributed trace looks in Yaga. And that's pretty nice because I can not only see um, uh, how, how long actually I, it took for me to send a response back to my user, I can also see um, pretty much uh, a a breakdown of all the different types of services or different types of uh, resources that I use or third-party APIs throughout that service. And if it comes to something even more distributed, that can be spun out into different services that are running and calling each other asynchronically. And uh, just by looking at this timeline, I can also understand where they invest most time and then later on also optimize that. Um, so, I just also want to emphasize on the benefits of actually adding context to each trace. And that means that if I'm being able to add 
my user identifier or anything that identifies my product into the uh, context of that trace using the open telemetry, I can later on use Elastic to filter those or use uh, Jagger to filter those based on the payload. Meaning I can look at all the requests that came from a specific customer. And if you think about troubleshooting, meaning that the most thing that is painful for me as an engineer is to actually reproduce the issue that happened last night. And if I have already all the traces with all the context needed, I can just search for that specific exception type during that time and then see all the requests going from uh, that exception. And that will allow me to troubleshoot things a lot more faster. So it will eliminate the need for me to reproduce. And then I can also use that payload, uh, uh, for example, like I said before, if it has the amount of orders that are actually being processed in my system, I can use that to monitor my business KPIs um, or my uh, the service uh, level indicators that I actually define. Um, and using trace can lead us by that correlation ID to find the exact uh, full log that was actually output, meaning I can use that request identifier to filter out the log. And I can also use the trace time to uh, use that to correlate between the actual environment metrics that I sent to my Prometheus. So using that distributed tracing, I can also use the time and the context um, can also hold the container identifier or anything related to my actual environment. So I can actually go and correlate those. And um, taking all of those uh, in consideration, so Basically, what we can do with those open source tools is just building our own observability service. And I can, uh, I'll just share a quite like a quick minute of what we in Epsigon, after working with all those tools we, we built uh, on our own, is basically a managed observability service. So, Epsigon, um, for those of you who not know, uh, is uh, allowing you to just uh, plug in the Epsigon tracing library and they will automatically collect all the information from those services and all the operations and, and be able to give you later on the ability to search and analyze the, those that, the data. And the tracing libraries are not confined in it to a specific environment. So they can run basically anywhere, Kubernetes, serverless, on-prem uh, uh, and that sort. And any, any request that's going on within of your services, the, the distributed tracing engine of Epsigon does that correlation behind the scenes. So we don't alter the data in order to inject correlation identifiers, we use that uh, with just looking at the fingerprints. And that's just alone allows you to find and troubleshoot that issue super fast. And you can also set up alerts on any production incident. So if you guys are interested, you can just uh, go to epsilon.com and, and, and see our demo over there. So, um, I went pretty fast. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, if maybe you guys have some questions, I'll pretty love to answer them. So just to summarize, um, if we're looking at monitoring our distributed system, we want to monitor the latency, the traffic, the errors and saturation. And um, just being able to uh, um, monitor the modern application, we need more than just looking at the metrics or just the logs. We also need to introduce distributed tracing since they become super critical for us uh, uh, in those distributed systems. So thank you guys, and we'll be just accepting q and now. Yeah, so I have a question here from Jagadish. Uh, how easy it is to add the tracing lib uh, to existing uh, application? Uh, so it all depends on the actual underlying uh, program language. Uh, with Epsigon, uh, within, um, Python, Node.js, uh, Java, Go, everything is pretty much as importing the tracing library. And then the collection uh, is being done some sort of behind the scenes. So you can actually uh, don't need to change anything within your code in order to introduce those uh, tracing libraries. Yeah, another question, is this supported also on .NET? So yeah, also .NET um, is supported. Cool, guys. Um, thank you. So you guys can um, ping me um, on my email or just find me on Twitter for any questions that you have. And uh, you can visit epsigon.com slash devweek to give, uh, get a special offer uh, just for you guys. And hopefully this was interesting enough for you. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.